Depression is a leading cause of disability worldwide. The condition does not discriminate and may affect anyone at any time. Whilst depression is common in society, understanding for the condition remains generally poor. People perceive depression as always linked with a stressful life event. Many consider depression as a fake illness, and others believe depression only affects women, with individuals affected needing to snap out of it. Without support, depression is unlikely to improve on its own. In the worst cases, depression may lead to self-harm or even suicide. Therefore, improving our understanding helps us identify the warning signs in ourselves and our loved ones earlier, thus ensuring prompt access to treatment and better outcomes. Want to learn more about depression? Keep watching as we'll break it down here. So, let's talk mental health. My name is Dr. Hart Pinto, and in this series, we aim to break down the social barriers of mental health. At JHP Medical, we make weekly information videos designed to increase your awareness and help you better understand your medical condition. So if you find this video helpful, subscribe, click the notification bell and the like button to support us in helping you. Okay, so what is depression? Many people struggle to understand what we mean by clinical depression. Everyone will feel down from time to time, often in response to sad events. However, these episodes are short-lived and we can recover. Depression is different to these natural fluctuations in mood. Clinical depression is a disorder where people experience persisting low mood. For those affected, symptoms do not improve despite exposure to positive events. Symptoms of depression may affect the ability to function at work, school or even when at home. Suicidal thoughts and attempts can emerge in the most severely affected. So who gets depression? 20% of the population will experience clinical depression at some time in their lives. The condition is not discriminatory, affecting people from all walks of life. Predominantly, depression presents during the 30s for women and 40s for men, but it can occur at any age. It's common for episodes to develop following a stressful life event, there are several risk factors that exist that place you at an increased risk of developing this condition. These include health issues such as chronic illness, including other mental health conditions or substance misuse, relationship issues such as a recent breakup, divorce or poor social support, low self-esteem or even recent unemployment. Additionally, a genetic link for depression exists meaning those with an affected family member are at an increased risk of developing the condition. What do clinically depressed patients experience? Everyone's experience of depression will vary. For the casual observer, symptoms are not always recognisable. Therefore, identifying friends and loved ones with depression can be challenging. Additionally, it's not uncommon for sufferers to delay seeking medical help for some time. People with clinical depression must have experienced symptoms for a minimum of two weeks. These symptoms are distinguishable as core symptoms and additional symptoms. The core symptoms of depression are a persisting low mood, which is present for most of the day with limited variation or response to positive changes, and a loss of interest in normal activities. Symptoms which patients may additionally experience are disturbed sleep, Individuals may experience insomnia, difficulty getting to sleep, or conversely, people may sleep more than usual. Fatigue or loss of energy, usually described by patients as being more tired. A change in appetite or weight. Some experience a reduction in appetite resulting in weight loss. Conversely, others have an increased appetite and associated weight gain. Agitation or slowing of movements. An increased agitation with observable restlessness or observable slowing down of activity. Poor concentration or indecisiveness. Individuals may experience inability to concentrate. Commonly displayed during school or work and may be interpreted by those close to you as indecisiveness. Feelings of worthlessness or excessive or inappropriate guilt. You may have feelings of guilt, reduced self-worth reduced self-esteem, and even reduced self-confidence. Amongst the worst affected, there may be suicidal thoughts or acts of self-harm. 
How will my doctor diagnose my depression? To diagnose clinical depression, your doctor must identify that symptoms have been present for at least two weeks. Depression symptoms must be unrelated to other medical conditions, medication, substance misuse or bereavement. Additionally, a patient's distress should be observable. The number and severity of symptoms you experience dictate the severity of your depression. Subthreshold depression is where you report at least two, but fewer than five of the depression symptoms. Mild depression is where you have more than five symptoms that result in little interference in day-to-day -day life. Moderate depression is where symptoms of functional impairment are moderately affecting day-to-day -day function, somewhere between mild and severe depression. Severe depression is if the symptoms you are experiencing are significantly interfering with day-to-day -day function. Patients may report thoughts of self-harm or even suicide. Additionally, your doctor will be keen to assess for any risks of self-harm or suicide. They may ask you the following questions. Have you experienced thoughts about death or suicide? Do you feel that life is not worth living? Have you made any previous suicide attempts? Has there ever been anyone in your family who has attempted or committed suicide? If any concerns regarding the risk of harm exist, your doctor may request the support of the psychiatry team. Further assessments may involve reviews and support at home or a voluntary admission to hospital. If you pose a significant risk to yourself or anyone else, compulsory hospital admission may be required. So what about treatment for depression? The recommendation for treatment will vary based on the severity of your symptoms. The best treatment decisions are shared between you and your doctor. Commitment is required as it can take some time for the symptoms to improve. For patients with subthreshold symptoms or mild depression, your doctor may recommend a period of observation, usually lasting two weeks. Should no improvement in symptoms occur, your doctor will offer self-guided self-help therapy. This therapy consists of supported media in either written or online form and is available at home. Additionally, you'll gain support from a therapist as face-to-face -face or telephone sessions over a three-month period. Computerized Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, CCBT, this self-help program, completed over a 12-week period, helps you regain control of your symptoms. Here, you'll develop techniques to address how you think and feel about your depression. Consequently, if this self-help therapy isn't for you, an alternative would be group therapy. Here you'll meet with other people with similar symptoms supported by a therapist. Group sessions are usually conducted weekly. Your doctor may offer a combination of more intense psychological therapy plus an antidepressant if you are experiencing moderate to severe symptoms of depression or your mild symptoms have not improved with previous treatments. Therapy sessions conducted face to face with a therapist will help you address your feelings and provide support to regain control of your depression. Various therapy types are available, such as cognitive behavioral therapy, interpersonal therapy, behavioral therapy, and even couples therapy. Choice of antidepressant medication is dependent on the number of depressive episodes you've experienced. For initial episodes, your doctor will prescribe an SSRI. These medications are also known as selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. Examples include citalopram, fluoxetine, paroxetine, or sertraline. Recurrent episodes amongst individuals with proven experience of SSRIs are prescribed an additional course of this medication. Amongst patients where SSRIs haven't worked for prior depressive episodes, alternative antidepressants can be used, such as metazapine. Should, despite the best efforts of your GP or primary care physician, your depression remain poorly controlled, referral to specialist care will take place. Amongst the most resistant cases, ECT, electroconvulsive therapy, can be helpful. ECT, a treatment that creates a controlled seizure, has shown to be beneficial in the most challenging cases. Herbal remedies. St. John's wort, a herbal antidepressant, can be purchased over the counter. It is a popular herbal medicine, often used in Chinese medicine. It's demonstrated effectiveness in managing mild depressive symptoms. However, taking St. John's wort is not advisable. Whilst many consider St. John's wort a natural alternative to modern antidepressants, it remains a potent medication with many side effects. Significant interaction with other medications can occur. 
specifically with anti-epileptic drugs, anticoagulants, other antidepressants, and the contraceptive pill, resulting in serious health issues. Additionally, inconsistencies in the manufacturing process mean the quantities of the active ingredients present in St. John's wort vary vastly between brands and batches, making its effects unpredictable. So what about prognosis? Everyone's experience of depression is different and will experience varying responses to treatment. You should be aware that symptoms usually take a few weeks to improve. Prescribed medications is usually continued for at least six months following symptom improvement to prevent any relapse. After the first depressive episode, around 90% will experience complete resolution of the symptoms. However, many will experience further episodes of depression in the future. Suicide rates for depression can be as high as 15%. So if you're experiencing thoughts of suicide or self-harm, please confide in someone you can trust, your doctor or the Samaritans. You are not alone. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe and interact with us by giving us a thumbs up or leaving a comment down below. This supports the growth of our channel and helps educate many more people about their medical conditions. Of course, this video does not provide individual medical advice and is intended for information purposes only. Do not consider this as a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis or treatment. Please do not ignore professional medical advice in seeking treatment because of something you've heard here. If you believe you may have a medical emergency, immediately call your doctor or ambulance service.